Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Happy New Year, you guys, and I hope you guys are doing good today. So anyways, it's time for another lovely TTV shout out. So I want to go ahead and shout out Unites.com. They're the ones who provided me with this beautiful Brazilian body wave unit. It's 22 inches long, and I'm definitely feeling it. If you guys are interested in getting the same unit or any other unit that they have on their website, all of the information will be pinned down below in the comments section. They're also running specials in the month of January where you can save anywhere from 10 to 15% off. So if you guys are interested, definitely check out the pinned comment and make sure you guys check out unice.com. All right, so you guys know what that meme means. We have another tale from the Pissy Pied Piper, okay? So what's going down is this. It's been a bunch of mess going down with R. Kelly and this whole surviving R. Kelly situation over the past few days, okay? So what initially happened is that before the show ended up airing, R. Kelly's backup singer, her name is Javante Cummins, she came out stating that she saw R. Kelly sleeping with 15-year-old Aaliyah on the tour bus, okay? She's saying that, you know, usually on the tour bus, there's curtains that cover up each bed and somebody went to pull back the curtains and they saw R. Kelly, you know, sleeping with Aaliyah. Nobody thought to call the authorities. They just kept it under wraps, okay? When the door flew open on the bus. What did you see? Things that an adult should not be doing with a child. Robert was having sex with Aaliyah. Did you feel protective of Aaliyah at the time? Do you feel protective of Aaliyah now? I feel protective of Aaliyah right now, which is why I can't get my mouth to say. So while all this information was being put out on social media, R. Kelly got really upset and he threatened to sue Lifetime and stated that if Lifetime decides to air Surviving R. Kelly, he was going to sue them. Lifetime being a defiant network said, we don't give a shit about your lawsuit. We're gonna move forward. And tonight, Surviving R. Kelly dropped, okay? And everybody's watching it. It's currently trending all over social media. R. Kelly's trending, the Pied Piper, Aaliyah, all of this stuff is trending on social media right now. This Lifetime movie was very, very disturbing to say the least. But now, before we even get into the movie, Aaliyah's mom came out yesterday and basically stated that she's really upset that her daughter's being tied into this documentary. And she's stating that the woman who claimed that she saw Aaliyah and R. Kelly sleeping together is a liar. So this is what Dana Hotton, who's Aaliyah's mother, had to say to E! News, go ahead and check this out. So she says, the woman and the so-called backup singer that describes seeing meeting or even breathing the same air as my daughter Aaliyah is lying and is a liar Houghton said in a statement to E! News my husband and I were always on tour with her and at interviews and every place she went through her entire career whoever this woman is I have never seen her before anywhere on planet earth until now lies and fabrications cannot be tolerated and allowed to be spewed from forked tongues of sabotagers of Aaliyah's legacy she then continued, my daughter only wanted to realize her dream of sharing her talent with the world and give her all performing on stage and in front of the cameras for her fans that she adored so much. She realized that dream thanks to those true fans who still love and support her legacy unconditionally to this day. Shame on those involved in this project who thought it was kosher to drag Aaliyah's name into a situation that has nothing to do with her today. Once again, this will not be tolerated. All right, so you guys just heard what Aaliyah's mother had to say. So like I told you guys, um, between Aaliyah's mother going off, R. Kelly threatening Lifetime, the movie damn still premiered, okay? It still premiered on Lifetime, and everybody's talking about it. Even Torrey said this. If you guys remember, Torrey had interviewed R. Kelly back in the day where he asked R. Kelly, do you like teenage girls? And R. Kelly was like, you know, when you say teenage, you know, what, what are you talking about? Like, what, what, what's the age range? This is what Torrey just posted on Twitter. Go ahead and check this out. The day after BT aired my R. Kelly interview, his people is called BT and threatened to sue if they aired it again. On what grounds? I have no idea. But BT quickly catapulted and put the tape back on the shelf, never to ear again. Hashtag surviving R. Kelly. All right, so you guys just heard what Torre had to say. So like I said in this first episode of Surviving R. Kelly, it's just really disheartening to see how many adults 
watched all this stuff play out and they just sat there quietly by, but now everybody wants to run and be seen in a documentary. So I find that very, very ironic. Another thing that's bothersome is the fact that people are saying that R. Kelly's molested. He was molested by family members. We've talked about this, you know, many times on this channel. And the thing is, even in the documentary, they're still not mentioning these family members' names. They're still protecting these predators. I'm not gonna throw any of my people, uh, my family under a bus. Yes, I was molested when I was uh, from seven on to maybe 13, 14, something like that. If he's saying that, I don't think that he's lying because it happened to me. It happened to me. I just, I just keep it and I hold it. I was molested by a family member and that shook my world. And that's the sad part. You know, so many times we talk about, you know, protecting our daughters, but we also have to protect our sons. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these males are out here inflicting anger and inflicting pain on women because of the sexual trauma and the physical trauma that they went through in their own childhoods. And that's not to make an excuse for R. Kelly because what R. Kelly has done is inexcusable. But I hope this is a wake up call for many people that we also have to take the abuse of young kids, male or female, seriously if you're gonna not say the family members but you're gonna talk about the actions they did then you're just as guilty for not you know holding these people accountable for the things that they did to R. Kelly as much as people want to hold R. Kelly accountable for what he did to these women you know so this entire situation is just really sickening and another thing that's really disturbing too is that it was mentioned well how come nobody did anything how come nobody noticed and the sad fact is the reason why nobody's done anything the reason why people didn't care why I was able to be brushed under the rug is because these were young black girls okay you know when things happen to young black girls it's seen as not a big deal they're seen as fast they're being seen as you know they deserve it they put themselves in that situation so that's the sad fact of the matter that that a lot of the stuff was swept under the rug and was not taken seriously because a lot of the girls who were affected by r kelly were young black girls so we have to start throwing away this mentality of protecting molesters and protecting child abusers and saying that you don't want to throw anybody under the bus if somebody is guilty of raping and molesting a child that's not throwing them under the bus that's doing the right thing so you know this documentary I'm gonna watch all three parts you know what I'm saying I'm gonna tune into day two and day three but it's really disturbing to see how many adults were around this situation watch all these situations play out but now like I said everybody's running to you know jump on this documentary and start you know spilling tea and you know splashing shit everywhere but when they were involved when they were in the moment nobody said a word and this is how abuse continues to happen and and this is how R. Kelly's still able to do what he's been doing for the past 20 years. Because nobody said anything during the time he was messing with Aaliyah and a bunch of other girls in high school back in the 90s that he just continued doing what he's doing. And even though we call him the Pissy Pied Piper on this channel, like I've broken down to you guys in the past, that is where he gets his name from because the Pied Piper lured the town's children out of the town after the townspeople refused to pay him for getting rid of all the rats. So the fact that he chose that name and they broke it down in the documentary as to why he chose that name, nothing happens by happenstance. There's no coincidences in this entire R. Kelly situation. He understands what his music does. He knows what his music does to the people. He knows a lot of people will defend him and make excuses for him because he makes damn good music. Like, let's keep it real. He uses his music, his vocal abilities, you know, the things that he was blessed with he used all those blessings to help his devilish actions so this entire situation is just really sad you know and as far as Aaliyah's mom I understand her pain I understand her not wanting her daughter's legacy ruined but I also feel like her coming out and blasting these people and calling them liars and not holding R. Kelly accountable for anything I feel like she's doing that because she's low-key embarrassed because now the mirror is facing her and people are asking well where were you the mother where were you the father how was your daughter just just left alone with this man for days and weeks at a time you know what I'm saying and most of all can you explain this marriage certificate because she can you know try and deny that R. Kelly was around her daughter she can say that R. Kelly didn't sleep with her daughter but at the end of the day that is a legitimate government sealed marriage certificate and somebody signed that marriage certificate. Aaliyah's name is on there. And at the time, Aaliyah was 15. And they fraudulently said that Aaliyah was 18. A lot of people have been saying for years the reason why he ran to marry Aaliyah was because Aaliyah was pregnant. 
you know, so this entire situation is just really disturbing. We may never know all of the truth, but the rabbit hole definitely goes deeper. But, you know, while I do feel bad for the Hotton family and the fact that their name is not being put out there, she also needs to realize a lot of the fans and a lot of people are trying to, you know, get to the bottom of what happened to Aaliyah. And I definitely believe in my heart of hearts that, you know, R. Kelly and Aaliyah had some type of relationship. I remember being a kid and watching them on BET and being surprised that Aaliyah was closer to our age because the way Aaliyah carried herself, the way she was around R. Kelly, we had all assumed that she was like 21 years old. I remember her and R. Kelly wearing matching outfits. What grown man in his late 20s is wearing a matching outfit with a girl who's 15 or 16 years old? They carried themselves back in the day like they were in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? So the rabbit hole definitely goes deep with Aaliyah and I don't want to, you know, say anything to mess up her legacy. She also dated Dame Dash. There were also rumors that she dated, you know, Jay-Z and, and that caused some type of conflict between the two of them so obviously there might have been some trauma that happened to Aaliyah early on in life where she thought that these type of relationships were just okay they were just acceptable I mean, all these guys were way older than her and you always saw Aaliyah with a much older crowd. You never saw Aaliyah with like Immature and Destiny's Child and, and stuff like that hanging out. You always saw Aaliyah with like the older group of people. So, you know, the whole situation is just really unfortunate. But like I said, I'm glad that Lifetime still decided to air the documentary. It's gonna be very interesting to see how part two and part three goes. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire disturbing situation once again concerning our R. Kelly do you feel like R. Kelly has a case to sue you know Lifetime you know for basically putting out this documentary and then how do you guys feel about Aaliyah's mother coming out and basically saying that you know Aaliyah never had sex with R. Kelly and these are rumors and it's not okay and her being upset so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces oh. we gonna hold y'all down you're living in our memories forever. She's never gonna let y'all go. I, I, we not remembering your death though. Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you wanna know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.